Yo ho, what is going on, viewers of the tube? Tyler here, Chico Crypto, coming to you guys live Saturday. How's everybody doing? Hope everyone's doing good. Wait for the stream to start. There we go. Oh, what is going on? So yeah, let's get into it. Let me pull up the chat real quick. Oops, not that one. What's up, everybody? Good to see everybody. Uh, Bitcoin hovering on to a significant level, in my personal opinion. If you guys could tell from the live stream thumbnail, I think some big stuff is going to happen. And we'll get into that in a second. I just want to thank everybody for joining the live stream first. Um, appreciate you guys. And I want everyone to follow me on Instagram, my new social outlet since Twitter kind of destroyed me, <laughs> took me down for saying uh, retard. I guess I can't say that on Twitter. Oh, seaweed. I'm doing good, brother. I appreciate your tip, man. Appreciate the support. Um, so yeah, follow me on Instagram. I um, posted my picture. I got a, yeah, that's pretty wicked beard, I must admit. But I am also on Uptrend, so follow me on there if you haven't downloaded Uptrend, or not downloaded, but signed up for Uptrend. Um, there's an invite le link in the description. But this is kind of a crypto-based, you know, Twitter type thing. Kind of like Steam It, but not as crappy, <laughs> you know, all that. And then finally, the most controversial one I'm on is Twitch, the Bitcoin SV powered. I um, only have 140 followers on Twitch, the least amount, um, but I have made the most off of it. So that's interesting. Is that just the Twitch um, Bitcoin SV community trying to get me to be a BSV supporter? Or is that, you know, is this going to continue? I mean, if it continues, I'll keep posting on Twitch. No doubt about that. So yeah, give me a follow on those. Um, but yeah, before we get into um, regarding Bitcoin, what I think is going to happen and some of the big moves that were happening, I got to talk about something else pretty big. Big and it kind of grinds my gears. So Ernst & Young, they're doing a virtual summit. Um, you guys know the baseline protocol. Um, what's their privacy protocol they have? I mean, there's a lot of stuff going down with Ernst & Young. Um, the EEA and a lot of big players. Well, they were going to do a summit, but since the virus broke out, you know, they're going to be doing a virtual one. Well, I got actually asked to be a part of this. You know, they I got asked because I guess the Ethereum community likes me and the stuff I put out. So I got asked and I was like, oh, yeah, I'd love to. I mean, I, I'm super interested in the baseline protocol and I do a lot of research. Well... Paul Brody, um, this guy was the one who contacted me. Well, Paul Brody got in a conversation with him, Paul Brody of Ernst & Young, and said, I don't like Tyler. No. So, hey, Paul Brody, suck my balls, bitch. <laughs> and you, you guys, we're not going to watch this because, I mean, it just pisses me off that, you know, because I talk crap about Data Dash and I'm kind of, you know... I speak my mind, you know, he doesn't like that. <laughs> so if they get Data Dash to support their stupid little conference, fuck you guys, all I gotta say. That's me being honest. Um, yeah, Paul Brody, you can suck my balls. <laughs> but yeah. Oh yeah, I will. Thank you, Alex. I appreciate the tip, brother. So yeah, I mean, I'm going to probably watch the third day of that conference myself because they are talking about the baseline protocol. But days one and two, I'm not watching. They can suck. I mean, and Paul Brody, when he talks, none of us watch it. We should troll this stream, actually. <laughs> actually, I don't know. <laughs> don't No, let's not troll the stream. They'll get me in trouble. But yeah, screw them. In my opinion, it's a bad choice because I am pretty big within the Ethereum community and my support is going to bring a lot of eyes on it. My not support is going to turn a lot of eyes against it. So, bad move, Paul. You're an idiot, but whatever. 
So let's get into the Bitcoin stuff. So we got to talk about the transaction that happened. Uh, I'm sure you guys heard about it. A lot of crypto YouTubers were talking $633 million was transferred on the Bitcoin blockchain. Nearly a billion dollars, uh, massive, and it only took 27 cents to do this transaction. So that is massive, you guys. Um, so yeah, 633 million BTC transferred for simply for a 26 cent payment. Took about 10 minutes, you know, Bitcoin blockchain. So what other type of system could do this in the world? There's not too many. I mean, Swift is one of the only ones that can transfer that large of amount. And Swift can do it, and they do do it. Um, for US $500 million, a dollar to dollar transfer from probably the same banks within the United States, you'd probably pay a $100 fee, and they could do it in 24 hours with Swift. Now, if you're doing internationally, it's going to cost you more, and it's going to take longer days. So, I mean, Swift couldn't do just what Bitcoin did. It can't. They want to be able to, and they're trying to with some new Swift stuff coming out. But as of right now, Swift cannot do what Bitcoin can do. So here's some time for it takes for Swift payments. 24 hours if it's sent within bank to bank within a country. Three to five business days, foreign, and then seven to ten business days depending on the, the transfer. Um, there is a couple other things that could do it. Um, Ethereum, it's possible because Ethereum does have an $8 billion market cap. People are, you know, put the trust of $8 billion into Ethereum. XRP, theoretically it could do it, but most likely not because, you know, 600 million is basically one third of XRP. Um, Ripple, the company, could do that transaction, maybe. Uh, Tether could do it because there is $38 million in Tether, but no one's ever, no one holds that much Tether. And then Bitcoin Cash, possibly. Bitcoin SV, Bitcoin Cash and Bitcoin SV couldn't because no one holds, actually, maybe. Hard to say. Um, but other chains, they couldn't because they just don't have the market cap. And the distribution of coins wouldn't allow it. So that it's freaking amazing seeing stuff like that. And I mean, to get a visual of how big this was, you got to look at it in terms of gold. So here's some gram of gold, you know, not that bit much. Ounce of gold. We start getting up there. Here's one, you know, troy ounce of gold. 400 troy ounce, I mean. And here's one ton of gold, you know, those little things, they start looking really small. But here it is in the back of a truck. So this is 1.66 tons of gold in the back of a truck. Do you know how much money it would cost to secure that, keep it safe, transfer it, get it to a new person? I mean, we're not even talking in, you know, dollar cents anymore. We're talking in the store of value aspect of Bitcoin. I mean, just in a currency standpoint for transferring money and a store of value standpoint, Bitcoin is looking very very tasty so what was that massive transaction you know who sent it where did it go oh man big old tip adrian <laughs> adrian mx mx i appreciate that massive tip man you are literally the man i hope you're a man adrian could be a girl's name uh, but Blockchain Brad, along with Charles Cut Cox Hoskinson, has a punchable face too. Just wanted to say out of no, nowhere. Goldman Sachs, FADA2. Thumbs up. Yes, I agree wholeheartedly. Um, I do not like Blockchain Brad or Charles Hoskinson. Um, yeah, Charles is a bad dude. I mean, he's using the coronavirus now as a delay. Like, really using it as a delay. I mean, every live stream he does coronavirus delay other projects aren't doing this it's like what is yeah craziness i appreciate that though so this is could be that 633 million dollar transfer fidelity you know may they announced that they were going to be offering trading services um and they said they were going to be offering them in 2020 they said they're going to be offering them in may but they had delays Quarter one of 2020, is that Fidelity? 
Well, actually, no, it isn't. It was Zappo. So Zappo is basically a crypto custodian. They have um, a consumer-facing wallet, too. But mostly, they do institutional clients, one of the largest. And yeah, that was a Zappo move. But actually, who was it? Because it wasn't Zappo. San Chernick. Chernick. Trying to pronounce that correctly? I appreciate the $15 tip, man. <laughs> I hope Adrian is man. Hey, could Chico, could Litecoin not do that scale of transaction? No, Adam Blanche. Litecoin could not do that transaction because you just got to go to the coin market cap of Litecoin. Litecoin cannot transfer that because Litecoin doesn't have a market cap of that even. And even if it did, oh wait, no, they do. No, it's just that you got to think of the distribution of coins. You know, there's not that big of a whale in the Litecoin ecosystem. But, yeah, I mean, it's possible if someone gains, you know, one something, you know, one-fifth of the Litecoin network, but no one has that. I'm over here doing karaoke in my apartment, and the walls are pretty thin. So far, nobody has came, me, came and told me to shut up. <laughs> nice, Isaac. I appreciate that. Do whatever you got to do to keep yourself entertained in these type of situations. Oh, USDT, 1.5 billion new token. Well, that's a great, <laughs> I mean, prelude into what I'm talking about on Monday. You guys, I'm trashing Tether. Trashing them hard. Oh my God, tippers. John Gasper. Dude, thank you so much, you guys. You guys are all awesome. I appreciate that. Hey, what would you want to know that? Oh, okay, I'll answer that, Rocco Kurik. Tyler, how would you respond to the argument that BTC later on is not sustainable because of energy put in? Well, there is that argument, and there is, that is why, you know, some coins are moving to proof of stake, is the energy thing. But that is the argument of why Bitcoin is so valuable, too. I mean, Bitcoin in itself is a proof of stake protocol, if you think about it. You are staking something with Bitcoin. You stake energy. It's the only protocol, proof of work, where you stake something and you don't get it back. You know, proof of stake, you stake your coins. If you unstake them, you get them back. You know, you're not staking coins with Bitcoin. You're staking energy. And that energy is gone forever. That right there, that value, that argument value, it gets to me because I'm like, damn. It is the only stakeable protocol where you're staking something that's gone forever. So, I mean, I'm still for proof of work. I think it's the most secure chain and I think it will be for a long time into the future. But proof of stake does have a value too because of scalability. You know how we crypto, it's time. Yes, yes, Tony, I appreciate that $20 tip. Jesus, guys, we make like 300 bucks in this live stream. So let's get back to Zappo. So, Zappo, they moved three, 633 million. That's what Decrypt said. That's what a lot of people were saying. No, it's not Zappo, you guys. It's Coinbase. So, back in August of 2019, who bought Zappo? Not necessarily all of Zappo. They acquired the important part of Zappo. Zappo's big business. The institutional custody business. They paid $55 million for it, I think, back then. Which was a screaming deal. Screaming deal. <clears throat> and guess who was actually in talks with Zappo to acquire it? Fidelity. Yeah, but Coinbase went out. And yeah. So, according to the CEO, Brian Armstrong, the company on average is adding 10 new custody, custody customers a week and $200 million in new assets. Following the Zappo acquisition, Coinbase says it now has over 150 clients for its custody business. That's pretty big. So what is Coinbase custody? I'm sure not too many of us have used it because it is for the institutional clients, but it is a pretty good application out there. Um, they do say they have over 150 clients back then, probably a little bit more now. 
But these are some of the big ones, you know, Polychain Capital, Caventure, these are some of the big VC funds, Prime Factor Capital, A16Z, we know Coinbase's connection to A16Z, massive um, placeholder, and then even some crypto projects. So Blockstack, who is, this is interesting to me right here. This makes me think some interesting things might be coming to the regular Coinbase app regarding Blockstack, because they are the custody, um, provider for Blockstack, you know, they're holding all their funds, their ICO funds, their investment funds, not ICO because they didn't run an ICO, they did, but a regulated ICO, keep it real, Chico, I will, thank you, V, you keep it real too, man, Am I expecting below BTC 4K again? Oh, God. It's hard for me to say. I mean, like I mentioned in my having video, I do foresee an 8K Bitcoin probably by the having May. But there's, I mean, it's hard to say because of what Finance 1.0 might go through. And we'll get towards that towards the end while, why we might see one. Um... But it's, ah, it's hard for me to say. So this is interesting regarding, you know, Coinbase custody. Coinbase Pro is pretty much, you know, not necessarily part of Coinbase custody, but it is for the pro clients. Um, and they decided last month they were going to be adding margin trading again. And some people are, don't like margin trading, but if you go to Coinbase and margin trade, I'm not going to hate on you because it is legal. And Coinbase, some people don't like Coinbase, but they're better for the crypto space than other companies. So you just got to go to CoinGecko. I'm never using CoinMarketCap again. Um, and check out their volume by currency. They've had like $138 million in volume, $141 million. And 76% of that, 77% of that is actual USD, actual US dollars, you know, and then they have other ones, Euro 11.5, GBP, and then USDC and BTC is about 7%. Most of the volume comes from USD, straight up USD. So, I mean, that's good for the space, seeing actual U.S. dollars being thrown into the crypto ecosystem. It's like It was like that before USDT when I first got in. It was all U.S. dollars. And that makes me more confident in the crypto markets than when we have something like this. When 80% of the volume is USDT. USDT, yes. I mean, BTC is only 3.8, or no, BUSD, their stable coin is only 3.8%, BTC 13%, Paxo, their other stable coin, 0.4%, you know, it's all USDT volume, every single freaking bit of it. And then you go to, you know, their Binance US site, and you know, they only have $8 million worth of volume. Binance US is absolutely failing. I mean, every US trader is still trading on Binance Exchange. Regulators, oh, you're watching that because they're not supposed to, because they offer leverage. I mean, they offer coins you shouldn't be able to trade. Oh, a majority of things. But Binance US, you know, it's failing massively, um, just like their decks. So 70.6% of their volume is USD on Binance US. And they offer USDT on Binance US, you guys. 25% of their volume is only USDT. Now, why is 75% or 80% USDT on the other exchange? Wouldn't you think things would be similar? You know, why is that? Because this is unregulated and you're doing wash trading. And this one, if you did that, you would be even fucking jail. Catherine Cooley, who's running it, she'd be in jail, not CZ. So something's out of whack, you guys. And Binance is front and center of it. So what is my opinion um, for the price? 
Well, I have a feeling, you know, if we are able to push above 6,800 and stay there for about four days, uh, nah, not four days, over the weekend, I think we're going to have a Monday pump, especially if Finance 1.0 has a good day. Um, if we start dropping below and we get into the 6,400 range and then Finance 1.0 even doesn't have a bad day, just has an okay day, we're going to drop, in my opinion. That's Tyler's technical analysis. So 6,400, we're going down. 6,800, we stay above, we're going up. Personal feelings. I think someone tipped me, holy. Can I get a little BTC dump this week, please? Maybe down to the 5.9K the Sunday, Monday. Well, that's possible if BTC starts deflating down to that 6,400 range and we stay under there for a couple days. But we got to crush Binance, you guys, because if you're watching this stream and you use them, please don't. Please go use something else. Uh, stop contributing to these guys. And this is what we got to do. So Binance Charity is um, using COVID-19 outbreak as a PR stunt, like they always do. Um, says, with your contributions help, at Binance BCF is set to contribute an extra 1 million USD towards donation matching, bringing the total to 2 million USD and doubling all contributions to 2 to 1. You donate 10, we will donate 20. Donate here. They might be donating, but this is who they should be donating to. I mean, okay, yeah, we do have a crazy global pandemic. I get that. But there was just a bunch of users on your exchange who lost a crap ton of money because you pulled a very shady move. Binance delisted the FTX leverage tokens. Bad stuff. A lot of people lost. There's millions of dollars lost. And it all comes down to money for Binance and power. Um, so we'll get into that in a second. But let's go back to the Binance charity. So they're saying all this is going to fight against the COVID. I would like to see proof of actual shipments happening. I would like to see video proof of it because I don't believe they are doing it. And the reason I don't believe they're doing it is because they haven't done anything else. Like this one, they have got literally $424,000 in 2018 for their for this Elastrina campaign and nothing's happened with it, you guys. It's literally nothing, 62 Bitcoin over a year ago. They're, they lie, you guys. This is a bunch of lies. In my opinion, a bunch of lies. They're using this crap to further uh, money laundering operations, in my personal opinion. So I actually did a couple videos on this. If you haven't watched them, watch them. They did terrible when they shouldn't have done. Did terrible. This one only got 11,000 views. <clears throat> but Helen Hayu is the one behind it. She has connections, pretty high up connections to the UN and stuff. Uh, she's a nasty woman, um, creating some pretty sweatshop operations all across Africa, paying them absolutely disgusting wages, um, running it like military camps. It's bad stuff. That's in this video. And then second video, I kind of dig deeper into some of the donations and Helen Hi you and how they weren't paying out. Um, went into the actual blockchain because at first it was on... Um, Bitcoin and Ethereum they're taking, so you could track donations. Justin Sun, too. Million dollar donation. Total lie. So, Helen Hayu is the head of the blockchain, um, Binance Blockchain Charity Foundation. Um, their senior advisory board is this nasty woman, too. She is pretty powerful, too. Up in the elite status, hangs out with the Queen Elizabeth, or God Save the Queen, whatever her name is of Britain, uh, but she's a nasty woman too. She is the former president of Malta. She is not the president anymore of uh, because of what she was involved with. Um, so there she is shaking hands with former PM Joseph Muscat. I'm sure if you've watched my channel, you know what I'm going to talk about. So Joseph Muscat, there was Marie again, their husband and wives, they were friends, you guys. So in 2017, 2018, um, Maltese journalist Daphne Galizia, she was murdered in a car bombing in Malta. 
um, what she did, rest in peace, Daphne, because she's doing something that I'm doing. She's, she was doing it on a larger scale, going after even nastier people. She dug into the Panama Papers and stuff. Um, she's a hero. And if you don't think so, and you like these people, go suck my balls. Um, but yeah, so Malta, she exposed Joseph Muscat and a lot of his cabinet members' corruption in the Panama Papers with the offshore accounts. And it was a lot of people. I mean, and the controversy was going on, but then she was eventually murdered. So Malta's prime minister, he resigned, Joseph Muscat. But there was also other people that were more highly involved, such as um, one of his main cabinet members, um, Keith Shimbri. <coughs> um, he is still being investigated right now. They don't know exactly how involved he was but he was highly involved so there he is or that is Jorgen French actually but he was another one implicated in it as well as um Keith Chimbry so this is the spooky stuff about Keith so there is Keith on the left and there is his nephew or relative Silvio who is also a part of the Maltese political group um and this is what he posted after the death of Daphne, the mastermind, at Keith Shembury, which he immediately deleted after this was found. Um, well, Silvio, you know, he was, guess what, best friends with CZ Binance. There he is. I mean, Joseph Muscat, Marie Louise, all these scumbags are friends with CZ Binance. And what do they do, you guys? They kill people. So, yeah. Don't, don't support that, please. If you do, what the fuck is wrong with you? Because, yeah, it sucks. See that kind of stuff? With the government blowing the virus out of proportion, what are the chances they go after cash by banning it for potentially carrying the virus? Um, it's possible. I mean... They're going to have to reassess things, you know, and definitely have some studies. But if some studies are done and, you know, they find out it does carry the virus, you know, and we start getting increased cases and stuff, of course there could be a cash ban. I mean, I put the likelihood of that happening at probably like 10 to 15 percent. But I appreciate the tip, man. Bitcoin dumper plump and peace. Dude, virus install. I appreciate that tip, but I don't do that. I don't suggest five coins to buy and then is Bitcoin going to dump or pump? I'm not that kind of YouTuber. Um, just w watch my channel. You know, I talk about the coins I like. Um, I talk about Bitcoin, what I think the future outlook is going to be. So yeah, scumbag. Scum Nagizi. And, I mean, Binance is just continually doing this kind of stuff, you guys. Uh, Binance quietly scrubbed their Visa mention from their payment card they announced. Yeah, quietly. They're basically acting like they had a partnership, trying to get a little Binance coin pump, and, yeah. Not. Visa? No Visa. <laughs> no Visa, partner. And this is kind of what I want to talk about, so... Right after they delisted the FTX leverage token, of which lost millions of dollars for users of their exchange, of which they had no remorse for, um, they started testing their options. Hmm. Oh, it, it is because of money. I mean, I went into this last live stream to the relationship with FTX owner. And yeah, they were really connected. Binance invested in them. Now what? We're dropping them fully? Money, money, money. So, I got a little secret for you guys. Um, Binance is going to have something coming. I hope you're watching, CZ. There is a lawsuit coming for the FTX losses from all the people. This is the Google Doc right here. And, yeah, it's coming. They're getting all the information. And they said they're not going to stop. Complaints to the SEC and CFTC is prepared. In case of silence or refund refusal, it will be sent. So the, loss, the losers of the FTX token for that are demanding, you know, to be 
refunded before that. And I think they should. Um, I mean, you, you have millions of dollars to send out, you know, TZ. So why not help out the people who you just stole money from? That would be really nice of you. Wouldn't you think? Yeah. And it's, this is because they're not sending a million dollars to help COVID. It's lies. Lies, lies, lies. We won't see any picture. I mean, we may see pictures now because I've said this and they've got to, you know, prove it. But we would have, if I never brought this up, we wouldn't see any pictures. And then their best friend of Binance Charity and Binance Justin Sun, of who CZ kind of is trying to step away from, um, he is now f f doing even shadier stuff with the Steam blockchain, creating a soft fork to potentially freeze and steal legitimate stakeholders' funds. It's just a crap show. I mean, but these are the people that have control of crypto right now. Whoopee. What do I think of the Binance widget and the Brave browser? I didn't like it. Um, I use the Brave browser right now because it's one of the only crypto functioning browsers out there with decent integration with a lot of the D apps that you get rewarded for browsing for. But I, I don't like that they partnered, definitely. It's, it comes down to money, I mean, if, you know, Binance came to you guys with $5 million, $10 million and said, you want to add our widget to your browser? <laughs> Be hard to say like no. Could have been more, you know. How much did they buy freaking coin market cap for? Four hundred million. So I mean, Josiah Barney, nice <laughs> emoji. I like the shock face. My favorite exchange. Um, one of my favorites to use right now is Uniswap. I'm swapping it up. Um, actually, Coinbase just invested in Uniswap. They invested $1 million in DeFi projects Uniswap and Pool together. And that's cool. Um, both of those are pretty grassroots projects. Um, not rather. Uniswap more than Pool together. YouTubers don't get paid with Brave Browser. No ads. Um, I don't care about the YouTube payments that much. I don't make that much money from YouTube anyways. Where was I at? Oh, oh so yeah, this is pretty interesting. So I want to finish what I'm going to talk about my own stuff for today with this video I posted yesterday. Buy Bitcoin and short oil. Short, short, short oil. Buy Bitcoin and short oil, petrodollar will collapse. So, short oil and buy Bitcoin, that's a pretty bold statement, Chico. Well, it's, it's bold because I think we're going to have an oil collapse. I mean, and this oil collapse could spell mean bad news for Bitcoin too, and could bring Bitcoin down to that 4K level. But... After the breakdown, I think that's when Bitcoin would really, really start to start to look tasty to people, especially as a petrodollar. It's, petrodollar collapse isn't going to happen in, you know, a couple days. It's going to happen over the course of a few years. But I think we're in the beginning stages of it. Um, we haven't entered the beginning stages of it yet, but we're getting close. So as we know, oil collapsed from the U.S.'s favorite level of the $60 and went down like Charlie Brown, got to the $20 mark, and then we've had some pumps. Um, Friday we pumped, and, uh, Thursday and Friday. Holy crap, you guys. Whoa. I got three tips all in a row. Whoa, guys. Chill. Did Crypto Crackhead send me something too? I can't see you. Too many. Unibright and EEA, they may be working together in the future. Also, also Unibright will probably be listed on more exchanges soon. Ivalo Ivanov. Um, yeah, I mean, Unibright, uh, solid connections they have with um, the EEA. 
also baseline protocol they're fully involved with that but i think unibright might be one of the reasons i wasn't invited to this um they talked to paul brody and said we don't want chico crypto i had a pretty good conversation with unibright regarding their promotional stuff um they contacted me and wanted me to get more involved with you know the ea and the baseline protocol stuff but i said i don't want to be involved if i'm going to be alongside with data dash um i don't like him i think he's bad for it um and they didn't like that i didn't like data dash um i said you guys should drop him <laughs> he's crap <laughs> he's bad news and they didn't like that so Crypto Crackhead. I'm keeping it up, brother. Strong, baby. Damn. What do you think USD inflation will be at the end of 2020? It's going to be redonkulous, I'll tell you that. I mean, it's hard to measure inflation by what they're exactly going to print, um, but it's a lot. Give me a cute meow. <laughs> meow. Hope that was cute enough. <laughs> I appreciate the tip, Alejandro, and Peter N, and Crypto Crackhead, and Ivalo. You guys are awesome. No, I won't talk about Baidao because it's a crap coin. Baidao is a centralized stablecoin on a centralized chain. It's not DeFi. It's, I mean, just going to, I need to just go to Baidao. Just to show you, this is one of the biggest YouTuber pump and dumps you're gonna see. They want to do it. I mean, they wanna to try to take over Maker from Dai, of course. And they say, decentralized finance and trustless stablecoin on Binance chain. Okay, that's a lie just right off the bat. It used to say like Ma MakerDAO on their freaking website. Yeah, but no, it's not a stable coin, you guys. It's crap. I mean, Binance Chain is centralized. It's not a freaking DeFi stable coin. How is that so hard to understand for people? And yeah, it's going to turn into a massive YouTuber pump and dump. They're paying YouTubers. To shill, shill, shill. Sure, I didn't get any tips. Yeah. I'm not good. I don't want to be involved with that. I don't trade on Binance. I don't care. I mean, if you want to make money on it, I don't care really. Um, but don't watch my channel. Go watch Crypto Zombie. He loves Binance. So, yeah, let's get back to this oil. We had a nice little pump on Thursday and Friday. And, you know, Trump started saying, hey, we got Saudi and the Russias. They're going to be chatting. You know, we're going to be chatting. Chatting's going to be coming all around. So the market started pumping. Well, there was an announcement of an OPEC meeting. Monday it was coming. And people started saying, hey, this OPEC meeting actually could send oil prices crashing below $10. And an analyst who actually called the collapse says it's going to happen. So $10 a barrel? Is that coming? I personally don't think so. I think around $15 Russia. Russia is has some good chess pieces in this match, you guys. They have very, very strong pieces. While, you know, the U.S. is left with only pawns, Saudi Arabia has some pawns and some good pieces. Russia's in a good seat right now. So, this is what happened, too. So, the meeting was supposed to happen on Monday. Well, now we have a delay. OPEC Plus meeting delayed as Saudi Arabia and Russia row over the oil price collapse. Sources. So, now it's been delayed till April 9th. When is that? I don't even know what date it is today. That's Thursday of next week. So, before the markets. So, instead of right before the markets open... They're going to have it right before the markets close. Hmm. Is there a reason for that delay? Beyond, you know, just them mulling over things? I think so. I really think so. 
So, I, I don't know what's going to happen. I mean, if this is the decider for a lot of things, you guys. People don't realize it all comes down to freaking oil. Oil, oil, oil. And if oil goes down to $10, $15 a barrel, they don't come to a deal. Production isn't cut. Um, yeah, we're going to be in for a world of hurt from Finance 1.0 and I think Bitcoin too. As a lot of the traders, whales, and Bitcoin, larger ones, also have massive positions in Finance 1.0. Like Arthur Hayes. And they're going to have to cover those. Did I get a tip? Oh, no. Should I buy more Linkies? Of course you should buy more Linkies. But like I said in my ID2020 video, I'm like, they're involved with some crazy crap, dude. Like, especially with ID2020, EA, Black Math Masters, Digital Asset. And it also goes to Unibright, too. And it's like, good for the pocket, but bad for our future. Unless it's fully decentralized. Um... Was I gonna say OPEC plus? Oh yeah, well that's it. So yeah, no, I mean it's gonna be interesting to see what happens on Monday. Um, it, with the delay, I don't see oil doing well. Um, I mean they wanted a meeting to happen, you know. I mean that's why the prices were pumping like mad because there was talks that meeting was happening and barrels were gonna get cut production. <clears throat> but the thing people don't realize is you have Saudi Arabia, Russia, and the U.S. The U.S. wants Saudi and Arabia to cut production, okay? Well, the U.S. isn't going to cut production, especially if prices stay at this level. So, the only way to get prices to go up is for production to be cut. Well, prices aren't going to go back up to the $60 range anywhere, anytime soon, where U.S. companies are profitable. So, Saudi and Arabia aren't going to come to a deal unless U.S. agrees to cut their production. U.S. can't afford to cut their production. Deal's not happening, in my opinion. Did not see my girlfriend since weeks. Hate to stay home, but I stick to the rules. Home office, coffee, and Chico vids all day. Take care and stay safe. Tomas Palmer, that is probably the best quarantine plan you can do. Um, stay home, listen to Chico. Yeah, I appreciate that, man. But, I mean, there's a possibility that a, you know, deal does come. You know, maybe the U.S. makes a deal with Russia, lifts some sanctions. You know, there's there's a lot of things that could happen. So, I don't know for sure, but in my personal opinion, I don't think there's going to be a deal because the U.S. isn't going to agree to cut production because they can't afford to. So yeah, I actually wanted to talk about this too. Um, I actually got my first 100K video. Whoop, whoop. The top secret pandemic plan exposed, got 100K. 105,000 already. I'm pretty proud of myself. That was one of my goals. So thank you guys for sharing the video if you shared it. Getting it out there. But this video was important, and I want to get into something regarding this video. So I talk about um, digital asset, an ID twenty twenty, Blythe Masters. Um, but I figured out some more stuff. So there's the Digital Identity Foundation. DIF. And this is definitely a part of, you know, ID2020. They have a lot of members. I mean, of course, a lot of the ID2020 members, but a lot of crypto projects too. From So they actually have um, some GitHub stuff you can look into. Repo. And they're working on stuff, too. And that's the thing, is they're actually developing this with Fury, you know. This was updated 10 hours ago, 18 hours ago, yesterday. 
And I actually found something interesting regarding the Universal Resolver. Or was it a Universal Resolver? Ah, there he is. One of the coders on this. He's been working on this, a lot of stuff, making some commits pretty frequently is this Daniel Buckner. Buckner. Who is who's Daniel Buckner? The reason I freaking got interested in him is because his freaking name CSU Wildcat. He went to the college I went to, and he's working on this crap. So I'm going to figure out this Buckner, and I'm going to figure out, you know, I'm going to try to be like, hey, I went to Chico State with you. What are you working on, buckaroo? Um, but yeah, it's pretty interesting. He went to my college. We can confirm that. He was in my, um, oh yeah, see, he's the mutual connection with Sean Morgan, my old professor. Um, yeah, 2004 to 2007. But yeah, he's their senior PM too. So he's the senior um, PM for the decentralized identity portion of Microsoft. So he's not some small dude either. And he's also executive director for the DIF. So interesting to see that. I don't know why so many of these like crypto things are happening around my area. Like, uh, right, we have Daniel Buckner, you know, of DIF, probably one of the main coders for the identity stuff happening. For ID 2020, went to my college. You know, you have Palmer Lucky of Oculus building that freaking who, whatever knows outside of Chico. It's crazy stuff. Hyperledger Ares and India are associated with DIF and solve sovereign identity too. Interesting. Oh, our crone, dude. Thank you just for the $5 tip out of the blue, man. I appreciate that. Yeah, and so if you guys didn't see this video um, regarding my Palmer Lucky stuff, I don't know if I'm going to be able to find it. I'm trying to think of the title. It's about Trump. Oh, there it is. Yeah. So Palmer Lucky, he bought this military silo outside of Chico recently. And there's work being done on it. And it's like one of the largest ones in Chico. Um, Titan 1 missile silos used to hold nuclear bombs back in uh, the Cold War. And it's one of the largest ones they built. It's Titan 1. And yeah, it's like a whole underground city. And there's recently work being done on it. And this was before the outbreak, December 5th, 2019. Issued. Um, Aristome LLC. Where is it? Um, yeah, and then the other cra crazy thing is the company. He's having it under Aristome LLC. I don't know if you can see it towards the bottom down there. It's a um Aristome is a thing from Chrono Trigger and in Chrono Trigger it's a fallout shelter. That's what Aristome is to hold people after the great event that happened. I'm like, "What?" And this was before any of the coronavirus stuff. I brought this up. So Shit, I know I got a picture of it. Droid Guardia in the year of 1999 AD, like a fallout shelter from a nuclear fallout. And here's- Or a disease. I didn't know we were gonna have a disease then. What it looks like from the game. Uncanny resemblance to Chico's Titan One underground system. Yeah, so this is Aristome LLC in the game. Fallout. And here's what it looks like from the game. Uncanny resemblance. That's a, and that's a, you know, sketch of it, what it looks like underground, Chico. 
Yeah. Uh. <laughs> what the fuck is G it says Chico? This is my crazy stuff. Yeah, I mean, when I found the resemblance of that back then, I was like, this is weird. Now I'm like, okay, this is even weirder. So I might be um, trying to go see what's going on. <clears throat> There's huge military fences around this. Um, you can't even get close. I would have thought about trying to fly a drone over it, but Palmer Lucky is part of Andrew right now, the defense company, and he's making freaking drones like killers. So I try to fly a drone over there. He's going to take me out. I'm sure he's got these. Do I have a paid membership? No, I do not, Paul Ka. Um, I have my Telegram group, which is kind of like a Chico Crypto membership. I'm in there pretty consistently, dropping hints, dropping bombs. So yeah, if you want to join the Telegram group. Um, I thought about, um, I do have a membership thing going through YouTube. It's not going to be like a normal membership where I have like a secret chat. Like, where I only drop, you know, hints. It's just going to be silly things if you want to support me. Like, in the beginning of a live stream, I'll shout out your name personally. I don't know. I've been thinking of things. But, not to, like, make more crypto money. I, I believe all the best crypto information is free, and it should be free. Make money off of the crypto companies, not your fans. That's how I... If my fans want to support me like you guys do, throw me a tip, you know, that's awesome. I'll take it. But I think personally I should be making my living salary off of the crypto companies who raise millions of dollars while, you know, most of you guys aren't millionaires. So so what did Bill do that's evil? Uh, you got to watch that video. I can't go through all of it. It's right there. Give it another view. But he's part of ID2020. But she is. Highly involved. Yeah, Nash Exchange is going live, but Nash has been a failure. It, it's not going to help. Unfortunately, I know a lot of you Nash holders are holding, praying. It's not going to help. Oh, it's just going to take me to the coin. I want the exchange. Nash exchange. God damn it. Yeah, that is that hurts, you guys. Three thousand one hundred and fifty seven dollars. I think that's their volume. Unless CoinGecko has it wrong, but that, it's not much, and I don't think Bitcoin's gonna help. It sucks, but there's better products out there. Um, easier. Uniswap. Neo has been a failure. Neo was a big Chinese hustle. Um, Neo has left their project, abandoned it, and they're helping Binance. I'll tell you that right now. If you don't believe me and you want to hate on me, go ahead, but... You'll see. Chat always comes out in the wash. And Dahong Fei and Eric Zhang, they are nasty, bad people. Oh, I love MakerDAO still. I mean, I still hold a significant portion. And, I mean, you're going to have shakeouts like this. Um, I mean, protocols are going to have <laughs> bugs and things. It's going to happen with anything even bitcoin um ethereum it's happened it's just how they rebound from it and MakerDAO has rebound pretty well um dies still there um they didn't create that much MakerDAO to save the system so good which one do i use the most coinbase or kraken i use coinbase more Have you ever heard of Crypto X FX Wall? No, I haven't. It just sounds just bad from the name, but. 
Yo. FX. What is it? Wall? I don't even know. Fuck my head. Was up swimming pretty bad? If this is it? Yeah, I, I wouldn't get in on it. I don't know. It looks like crap to me. I think. <laughs> Thank you for the tip, though. Hope that's not what you wanted to hear. Hey, Mateus Maza. I'm sorry you got banned. Um, I, uh, send me a message, PM, on Telegram, and I'll try to take care of it. It's just, I, there's so much. Too many people now, I can't do it all myself. Hey, Tal Jones, I appreciate that, man. I'm glad you found my um, videos very insightful. It takes a lot of research, a lot of time to get them done, so I appreciate all the support from you guys. Yeah, I mean, I will say it like I mean it, no matter what. And it gets me into trouble sometimes, but then some people like it. Um... But I'm not going to change. Your Chico is going to be Chico no matter what. Um, like, I mean, I could have tried to change for these guys. No, I'm not. If you don't like me, middle finger. That's all I got to say. And it's a bad decision, in my personal opinion, that you're not liking people for who they are. So you'll go with fake people. And I believe this is the end of the fake fluencer. The last 10 years have been pretty dominated by the fake fluencer, you know, having the fake car, the fake money, the fake girlfriend, everything fake about them. People want to see real. I mean, not all people drive around and fly all 24-7 and have that luxury lifestyle. I mean, half the time they don't even have that. They're just taking pictures with the car, you know, renting it. So... People are over that, in my opinion. And I think 2020 to 2030 is the year of the real. And for people like this, who are going to pick fake influencers, you're going to fail because of that. My personal opinion, you may not like it, but I don't care. Oh, my pleasure, smoke weed every day. A $4.20 and 20 temp. $4.20 why can't I even say that? Four dollar and twenty cent tip, baby, four twenty. So we might as well. Oh, what's that? Four two zero. I don't even know the name of the song. Oh man. Can't even find a lyric. It's four two zero. Yeah, I can't can't think of the song, and they can't don't even have the lyrics in there. Hmm. Bullshit. I was gonna play a sweet marijuana video from back in the day. We're all going to go broke in crypto. Well, no, actually, you're not. If you, you know, know what you're doing, you start learning, um, not participating in shitcoin pump and dumps, um, investing in actual good projects for the long term, everything's going to be all right. I mean, even since, you know, uh, the 2017 bull run, We've had two pumps, you guys. I mean, yeah, people lost money from January to then. But look it. Another pump. Another pump. If you didn't make money in those two pumping times, you're a bad trader. <laughs> or a bad investor. Maybe you should think about not being in it. Or get better and start watching better YouTubers and doing better research and reading better articles and 
What silent but deadly BTC moves are being made? Zappo, Coinbase, big old freaking transfers, and why? Talked about it earlier. Afro man, because I got high. No, it's not an Afro man. I would have remembered that. <clears throat> I can't remember the name. It's some stupid stoner band from like NorCal. Get off coin market cap. I'm on coin market cap. Oh shoot. I'm just so ingrained, you guys. I'm trying my hardest. I mean, I've been using <coughs> coin market cap since 2013. Since it first came out. It's hard. Any thoughts on ICX and my ID? It's mm, I mean, I see ICX and their shells trying to push it now that, you know, the ID2020 stuff is out, but nothing. <laughs> My personal opinion. I like Icon and I hold a little bit, but I don't think it's, you know, worthy of a pump from my ID. They're not involved with ID 2020. Time to double down on Neo and Cardano. Wow, that is a bad move, I will tell you that. Two coins that are the delay of delayers. You know, Neo 3.0. Yeah. Cardano's just blockchain. Yeah. At least Neo can get something out. All right, guys. Well, I think I am done for today. I've been streaming for a a little bit over an hour actually um appreciate every one of you um coming in asking some super solid questions i don't need a mask at home why would i wear a mask at home that's stupid yeah laugh out loud neo is all it i laugh out loud at that too all right am i ready for nwo nwo are you talking about Are you talking about Big Sexy, Hulk Hogan, and Sting? Because <laughs> I'm ready for that again. This is what WWE needs to do if they want to come back. I watched the crap out of wrestling back in the day. My favorite wrestler was Sting. My favorite time, Sting, Wolfpack. Red and black paint. Oh, yeah, I was fucking. Don't turn your back on the wolf pack, or you might end up in a body bag. I remember that too when he joined the New World Order wolf pack. I was freaking stoked. Ah, uh, no problem, you guys. Um, yeah, I don't know why I got on a NWO Wolfpack ta tangent. Oh yeah, because guy asked me about the New World Order. Um, but yeah, <laughs> I hope you guys like seeing too. Man, people just asking me their questions and showing their coins. Like, what do you think about Monero? S and X K and C leak. What's the point of that, dude? Just stop. I'm gonna put you in timeout. <laughs> Craziness. All right, guys. Well, again, appreciate you all. Appreciate everyone who threw a tip. Um, Monday, tune in for that video. Like I said, I'm gonna bring right back up the tether stuff. No one's talking about it. And there was actually something that just happened a few weeks ago. That not a single media outlet talked about. So that's coming Monday. I'm going to be wrecking them. Tune in for it. And I'll see you guys next time. Peace.